Good evening and welcome to the Murfreesboro City School Board meeting. We will now stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. <clears throat> You may be seated. Good evening to everyone. Could I please get a motion for the approval of the agenda? So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, sign of aye. Aye. Uh, thank you. Communications, Dr. Gilbert? Yes. Your first communication is we would like to congratulate Bradley Academy School Counselor Allison Payne. She has been named the Middle Tennessee Grades 5 through 8 finalist in the Tennessee Teacher of the Year Award. The Tennessee Teacher of the Year will be chosen from nine statewide finalists in the fall. And then the final winner will represent Tennessee in the National Teacher of the Year competition. So we certainly want to congratulate Allison. The following schools will receive funding up to the amounts um, indicated that I will tell you about to operate the fresh fruit and vegetable program. Bellwood Bowden Preschool, $19,400. Bradley Academy, $18,900. And Hobgood Elementary, $16,050. And also, School Nutrition has applied for and received a grant for approximately $10,000 that will be used to replace equipment at Mitchell Nelson Primary. A special thanks to Girl Scout Gorilla Beck, who is earning her Star Award by working in the Bellwood Parenting Center. She has been helping with summer ESP. She's been helping take care of the Parenting Center, so we certainly appreciate that. And she has used her babysitting money to purchase the materials and supplies she uses while working with our students. And then the final communication is we would like to congratulate Mitchell Nelson Elementary 6th grade teacher Gail Porterfield. She has been asked by Congresswoman Diane Black to serve on the Congressional Steering Committee for Innovation in Education. And those are your communication items. Thank you. Board, under consent items, are there any you need to pull out or have discussion before I ask for a vote to approve? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor of the approval of consent items, sign of aye. 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 Ready? Action items, Dr. <clears throat> Gilbert. Okay, Mr. Anderson. <clears throat> First action item is behind tab three. It's approval of the school debt service budget amendments. This is a housekeeping amendment requested by City Hall under the new GASB 54 rules and regulations of accounting, and GASB stands for Government Accounting Standards Bureau. Uh, it's a new way to show how the school system assets are accounted for. The requirement now is that the school system actually show the money that comes in and goes out to pay for debt on a school building. What's marked in yellow on the following pages in Exhibit A shows the money that the city gives to us, and then they show how the money is used or transferred. If you see in the budget 1112, the last column, the 74997 that is the loan repayment for the EESI-2. The City Hall is respons responsible for that, so they have to show it on our books as well. Uh, and if you move over uh, two, two additional pages to the big yellow block at the bottom, this shows the school debt service fund. City Council approved this document at their meeting last week, and they've asked us to make sure it just uh, coincides with ours, and they've sent us this information to include in ours. But like I said, it is a housekeeping fund under the new accounting standards. There's no money, extra money in or extra money out. It's just the way the, the way the accounting has to be shown. Ms. Baker, do we have to have a motion and approval of this? Uh, okay. I got a question. Uh, Mr. Please. Campbell. Uh, Mr. Anderson, this is based on uh, like attendance. What attendance number are we basing proposal for 2011-2012? On this particular <clears throat> thing or just our regular budget? Well, on this particularly, like the attendance, it's, you know, it, it's up from two, 2010 to 2011 compared to 2011-2012. Are we looking at increase in 
Um, no, I actually actually dropped it about 40 students in your budget document that you approved. Uh, 6850 was the number I used for our budget, and originally last year's number was 6890. So we dropped it that many students. But the part that we've already gone through and, and approved the budget, this is just the debt service piece. That's the housekeeping part of it. Okay. Did that answer your question, Mr. Campbell? Do you have another question? Well, I do, but I, I may just give Mr. Anderson to ask you. But, but go down and look at the, at the part, uh, employee positions. Okay, we're looking at six less proposed in the, I guess, full-time, part-time is 15 less. Okay, you're talking on the first page, sir? <clears throat> yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir, that's the numbers from our budget that we provided to them. So proposed 2011-2012 is what our budget is based on that we've already adopted, correct? Yeah. Yes, sir. That's okay, correct. thank you. That answered my question. Ms. Phillips. I just wanted to take a moment while we were mentioned in the City Council, we don't get a chance to express our appreciation to their support, for their support for the Murfreesboro City Schools and Mr. Washington's representing us to the, to the Council, and I just want to take a minute and express our appreciation. <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Phillips. I'd move for approval. Thank you, Mr. Renee. Is there a second? Second. There's been a motion and a second. All in favor, sign of aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right, the next one is Ms. Baker, and we welcome her back tonight. Okay, you have before you um, an, four different policies for second reading. I'll take each one individually. The first one is board policy BO31 regarding fundraising. Um, are there any questions or discussion regarding this, um, the revisions to this policy? I had a comment. Um, this is a this is a good policy, and I appreciate everyone's work. I just wanted to take a minute and reiterate um, what I had had said at um, our study session, which is I really appreciate that we try very hard not to nickel and dime our parents to death. There are so many demands on the parents, and and I, I think this policy supports that attitude, and I appreciate that. Mr. Renia, could we get? Uh, <clears throat> either Ms. Baker or Dr. Gilbert to kind of go over just to uh, highlight this policy because I think it's important that, that we're putting a maximum on the number of, of, of uh, fundraisers and what, what they might be. Someone might want to just go over that verbally so the public could hear it. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Um, well, this policy, first it divides the fundraisers into two different categories. You have active mm -hmm. fundraisers and passive fundraisers. The active fundraisers are those which involve taking time out of the instructional day at the schools. The passive fundraisers would be the fundraisers that are similar to the um, when the school system gets a percentage if parents go and eat at certain restaurants or um, vending machines or bookstores or yearbook sales. Um, also, it has a limit on the number of active fundraisers each year. Those are limited to four active fundraisers per year, and that's inclusive of any fundraisers conducted through the PTAs or PTOs. Um, and the policy does, um, it has some criteria for holding the fundraisers, one of which is it's gonna, it discourages door-to-door -door sales. It um, does not encourage awarding one student a grand prize for raising the most funds, wants all students treated fairly and equally in participating in the fundraisers. Um, those are just some of the highlights of this policy. Are there any others you'd like pointed out? Uh, if I could, and I'm assuming, and I, I know this, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Dr. Gilbert, you have gone over with the principals in detail this policy, yes, and uh -huh. they feel comfortable with yes. it. Yes. Thank you. All righty. Mr. Renier, you want us to like, entertain a motion? I'll move that we approve the uh, fundraising policy as written. Second. All righty. Mr. Ridley, if you'll call the roll. Dr. Batson? Yes. Campbell? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Yes. Thank you. Okay, the next policy before you for second reading is 
um, board policy SS9, child nutrition management. Um, this policy, if you'll notice, there's a revision on the table that um, includes on the second page, line 36, and principal was added to what was in your original board packet. Are there, is there any discussion or questions regarding this policy? Is there a motion? Uh, I'm so moved. Thank you. Second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Ms. Ridley, if you'll call the roll. Dr. Buckman? Yes. Mr. Campbell? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Duggan? Yes. Ms. Phillips? Aye. Mr. Rainier? Aye. Ms. Wade? Yes. Okay, the next policy before you for second reading is Board Policy STU 38, Zero Tolerance Offenses. This policy in the board's um, requirement to go over their policies every two years. Um, I've revised this policy only by inserting language specifically out of the state code so it's very, very clear when the principals or any other staff have to pull it and review it. Um, and that's the majority of the changes. The one before you, I did have one additional um, item I wanted to add. If you look at line 33 on the first page where it says the policy shall be published in the Code of Conduct, I'd like to add after that the Code of Conduct set forth in the Student Parent Handbook. So it's, we know that's where it's located if anyone has a question, well, where do I find the Code of Conduct? Are there any questions or discuss, discussion regarding this policy? Mr. Rainier and then Ms. Duggan. I, I think, again, any time we have a policy of this magnitude, I think it's always good at board meetings that we can kind of go over it a little bit. And the one thing I would like you to explain is to kind of explain zero tolerance and what kind of firearms we're talking about. So it's very, it's very specific in this policy, and I think it's very important that the public hear that. Okay, this policy is based strictly on state law. There is a state law that requires every school system to have a zero tolerance policy. And I've pulled the language out of the state law and placed it in this policy. And it's under Tennessee Code Annotated Section 49-6-3401, which defines what a zero tolerance offense includes. It includes bringing a firearm to school and or the unauthorized possession of a firearm on school property. And they define firearm pursuant to the United States Code section that defines firearm. And a firearm would include any weapon, including a starter gun, which will or is designed to or may readily be converted to expel a projectile by the action of an explosion. It also includes the frame or receiver of any such weapon. It includes any firearm muffler or firearm silencer. It also includes explosive incendiary devices or any similar destructive device such as a bomb, grenade, rocket missile, mine, or poisonous substance. And that, that, all of that language comes straight out of the, the United States Code section that this statute references. The a zero tolerance offense also includes the unlawful possession, use, sale, distribution, or delivery of any drug or including any controlled substance as defined by the state code or a legend drug as defined by Tennessee Code Annotated 53-10-101. And the last um, zero tolerance offense category in the state law is includes battery of a teacher principal, administrator, or any other employee of the school where battery is defined as intentionally, knowingly, or recklessly causing bodily injury to another or causing physical contact with another person that is extremely offensive or provoc um, provocative. So those are the, the categories that are included under the state statute for zero tolerance offenses. Again. And is there an appeal process, and could you, if there is, could you kind of go over those two, please? Yes, there is an appeal process. Um, first, it would be the principal that will determine 
will will decide whether or not the student's committed a zero tolerance offense based on reviewing the policy. If the student or um, an employee of the school system or the parent or guardian of the student disagrees with that decision, they have the right to appeal it within five days to the disciplinary hearing authority and they will hear that appeal. They will make a determination as to whether or not they agree that the offense was a zero tolerance offense and then they can also make a recommendation for a level of punishment to the director but only the director is the one authorized to um, determine the actual level of punishment. Ms. Duggan. Um, I just wanted to make a comment about the very last paragraph which you've already mentioned that our director of schools does have the authority to modify that and I think I'm thankful that is in the law particularly since we're a pre-k through sixth grade system. Uh, my question was though if you would one more time give us the wording that you wanted to add on the first page to make sure I wrote it down correctly. Okay. It's at line 33 after code of conduct include as set forth in the student parent handbook. Thank you. Are there any more questions or comments? Hearing, uh, I move we accept this uh, policy Thank as Dr. written. Bertram. Second. There's a motion and a second, Ms. Ridley, if you'll call the roll. Okay. Dr. Buckham? Yes. Mr. Campbell? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Duggan? Yes. Ms. Phillips? Aye. Mr. Rainier? Aye. Ms. White? Yes. Okay, the next policy before the board for second reading is board policy PER 29, um, vacation leave for 12-month personnel. Um, this policy has been reviewed on first reading and at the board policy meetings. Are there any questions or discussion? I move we accept it as written. Thank you, Dr. Buttram. There's a second. Second. There's a motion and a second. Ms. Ridley, if you'll call the roll. Okay. Dr. Button? Yes. Mr. Campbell? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Duggan? Yes. Ms. Phillips? Aye. Mr. Rainier? Aye. Ms. Wade? Yes. Question. Mr. Campbell? I know we passed. This policy will go into effect August 1st, or? I mean, it does not affect those who, those vacation days or whatever that are already accrued, am I right, or not? Okay. Go ahead. Kelly, do you want to answer that? Well, um, I'll let Ralph answer that. <coughs> this will go into effect July 1st. Okay. Dr. Gibb, with reports and information. Under reports and information, we have some special guests tonight. And most of you know that we have a leadership camp that we began last year in partnership with the Jennings and Rebecca Jones Foundation. Paul Vaughn is the, the administrator of that that um, foundation and we really appreciate his work with us but we have uh, our children are here that have been participating in the camp some of them and I'm going to turn this over to the leaders Gina Graham and Laura Heath and thank them very much for for leading this camp uh, good evening board we're very excited to be part of the camp again this year. Uh, for the past two weeks 17 students from Murfreesboro City have been immersed into community leadership They've recognized characteristics of leaders and the roles they play in the community. They've become aware of each individual's responsibility to be a contributing member of the community. They've learned about Murfreesboro's past and its promises of the future. And tonight we have a lot of future leaders here with us. And Laura's going to talk a little bit about how they got chosen to be in the camp. Hi, I'm Laura Heath. Um, these students were nominated actually by their fourth grade teachers for obviously their strong leadership abilities, for their awareness of the responsibility to the community, and also for their understanding of the rights of others, and for their focusing, their ability, their focusing their potential to help in the future for Murfreesboro. Each day we talk about parliamentary procedures and Robert's Rules of Order, so it's nice to see the meeting in action. And they have an elected a chair, so I'd like to introduce their chair. This is Andrew Telford from Discovery, and he has a few words, and then I'll introduce the rest of the students. Hello. As said before, I'm Andrew Telford, and I'm here to teach you about the Leadership Collaboration Camp of 2011. Well, every day we take field trips to different places to learn about leadership qualities and the history of Murfreesboro. My favorite field trip so far has been to the Nissan plant. 
We learned how they make the cars, where they make them, and what tools they use. Hi, my name is Caroline Lewis, and I'm, I'm from North Bellow, and I'm here to introduce the website. This is the class webpage. Right here, you could click here, and if you wanted to blog about the camp, you could type in whatever you wanted. Right here's the agenda. The, ag the agenda tells us about what we do, where we eat, what we do in the morning, and in the afternoon. Participants is the whole classes and and all the schools that they go to. My name is Tyler Erdman and I'm from Mitchell Nelson and I'm also in the leadership camp of 2011 and we have two albums of, and that, of pictures and I keep track of what we do daily. This is the day we went to the battlefield and we they told us the history about the Civil War and the there's a place at the battlefield called the Slaughterhouse where the North was attacked and had to retreat and we all earned our junior ranger badges there for completing six activities in the book and We went to the MTSU airport and they told us about how the, they worked and they told us about the dispatchers they had and all the different airplanes. They had 29 aircraft there. They we got we didn't get to see their simulators, but they had some there and um, they had we got to see their maintenance where they worked on their and repaired their airplanes and that was it all hi my name is Edwin Walken I'm from John Pittard Elementary you are invited to our leadership grad collaboration graduation ceremony on Friday, July 1st at, from 10 to 11.30. And this is Caroline, she's from Siegel. I would also like, while she's handing those out, in, to introduce a parent, one of our parents, of Allison Dial, one of our students. Her name is Laura Dial. They'd like to speak about her daughter in the camp this week. Hi, when we got the invitation in the mail, we didn't really know what to expect. Um, said a leadership camp, said she'd been nominated. And Allison was pretty excited. She thought that sounded pretty cool. Um, and we have just been amazed at, at everything she's gotten to do. And what I'm experiencing as a parent is she comes home every day and she is just bursting with enthusiasm to tell me about all the things she's seen and experienced. These aren't things that, you know, normal everyday citizens get to do, especially not all in two weeks. And so um, she comes home and she's telling me about everything she has to do. And the next minute she's gone. I'm like, where's my daughter? And, and so I go look for her and she's at a computer. And I said, what are you doing? Oh, I'm blogging about what I did today. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it's wonderful. I, I, I don't blog. And so it's very impressive that this program has given all of these different things to the kids. So I just wanted to say how important it's been and how uh, grateful we are to have been included. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Phillips. Um, Chairman Wade, I just wanted to take a moment and say that <coughs> I have a great privilege of getting to be 
at the same place this wonderful leadership camp was at MTSU's Aerospace Department, <laughs> um, the um, Air Traffic Control Division. And I was so impressed with these kids. They were so, so well behaved and they were so interested and asked such great questions. And, and they were, you know, they were so enthusiastic and, and the, I was just so impressed. And I really thought that they're getting some great leadership at home, but also in their teachers, Miss Heath and Miss Graham. So I wanted to thank them for all that they do. And also um, the Rebecca and Jennings Jones Foundation for helping support this in Murfreesboro City Schools. I have a question, Ms. Graham and Ms. Uh, Heath. There were some more that were sitting. Did you want to introduce them in front of the camera so they mm -hmm. can see themselves later? Yes. Well. And I think this same group has entertained Mirth coming real soon. That's right. <laughs> Beware. My name's Lexi Platt and I'm from John Pittard. My name is Annabeth Campbell and I'm from Bradley Academy. My name is Nico Vidari and I'm from Skills. My name is Tori Chikara and I'm from Hopgood. My name is Michael Getzinger and I'm from CLA. My name is Allison Dial and I'm from Skills Elementary. Let's give this group a hand. And I, I want to thank you for your support for letting us do these special things for these children because we couldn't do it without your support and certainly could not do it without your understanding of the partnerships we have in the community with, with Jennings and Rebecca Jones Foundation. So thank you so much. And, and I appreciate Laura and Gina. And last year when we talked with them about doing the camp, I'm not sure that they knew what they were getting into. but. Uh, <laughs> But they've had a good time with it, and I really appreciate their and, – and this goes on throughout the year, too. They, they will be doing several things throughout the year, so it's, it's really neat to watch the kids throughout the year. So thank you very much, and thank you, parents, for your support. Our next camp is our Tech Explore Camp, and we have Gretchen Campbell, who is here, and she's going to introduce two of our, of our new partners. Um, we, we really have a jewel in the Tennessee Technology Center here in this town, and so this year we are partnering with them. We will be partnering with them for a health camp later on that they, I'm sure, will tell you about, but just finished partnering with them uh, with a tech camp. So, Gretchen? Good evening and tell you guys about the camp today. Uh, we've had a great opportunity this year to partner with the Tennessee Technology Center at uh, Murfreesboro with um, a camp that we've been able to do at the center. And it was a great thing. We had a lot of folks on the Murfreesboro City School side, um, Trent uh, Cheeves and Mickey Brooks, and our instruction department was a big part of this. Our transportation department was a, a part of this. And um, Andrea Bell played a huge part in this because she uh, was able to get the kids started. We picked them up at Franklin Heights, and they were able to go over to the Tennessee Technology Center at Murfreesboro to uh, do this, and it was a great opportunity for these guys. Um, I'd like to show you a little bit about the a little bit about the camp and and show you some pictures of the wet the camp that they went to. So I'm going to go to the website here. This was their um, website that they made for the week. Uh, they had their schedule listed, and they had they took a lot of pictures this week. And it, it was a great opportunity. The kids got to uh, learn about iPods. They got to take pictures with it. They got to uh, stream the video in and make all kinds of movies for them and that kind of thing. And it was a great, great uh, day a week for them. In fact, they didn't want to leave at the end apparently. So that was awesome and we appreciate Tennessee Technology Center really rolling out the red carpet for us. Um, here's a, a little bit like kind of a video with some rock music so just wanted to warn you. And <laughs> it, is, <laughs> it is a little small but we're going to show it.
lots of other pictures through here. And um, they did uh, commercials for the Tennessee Technology Center, and this is one of the guys um, uh, talking about the Technology Center. He was like a salesman and um, did a lot of cool things with it. So they had a great time, and we do appreciate that. And um, with that, I would like to introduce um, Carol Purrier and Judy Henniger to come and talk about the Technology Center. Thank you, Gretchen. And again, thank you for letting us be here tonight because it truly was just a fabulous week and we value this partnership greatly. And actually, I, I sat by Dr. Gilbert's office one day, and if you've ever done that, in about 15 minutes, Judy and I were having a camp, uh, two of them. But it was just absolutely wonderful, and certainly for City Schools, the staff, the folks were wonderful to work with. And uh, I'm talk about Judy in just a second because she handled it on the TTC Murfreesboro side. But just a wonderful opportunity. When we talked about the camps, we wanted to have two goals. One was certainly to give the students an opportunity to learn about the technology that is so important in their classroom and will affect every part of their life as they grow up. So the, they, they did that and they got to go to visit all the campuses, the different courses and buildings and programs and take pictures and make the websites and the commercial. So that was one part. We wanted them to have a quality week on school. Uh, at the school. The second part was to get the parents involved and on Thursday night we had an open house and so the students could show their um, their projects that they had worked on all week and then also the parents got to hear about the technology center and the parents went home with a packet of information about the programs and the um, things that we can offer for them if they decide to change jobs or find themselves looking for a new career. So it was a great time to educate the students and the parents. And so it was a wonderful, uh, wonderful week, and the students were so well behaved, and um, they did want to stay the whole week, and I think I would have let them, although some of our equipment requires you to be tall enough to hit the switch buttons and things, so there was a little bit of a problem there, but we were just excited to be a part and very excited for this new partnership to be going on. And I'm going to turn the program over to Ms. Judy Henniger. She's our assistant director, and literally after Dr. Gilbert and I started this brainchild and she turned it over to Gretchen, I turned it over to Mrs. Henniger to make sure that that we did what was needed, and she did a fabulous job in taking that leadership role. So I'd like for her to share with you a little bit about the previous camp as well as the camp for next week, in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pereira. We appreciate you having us tonight so we can tell you what your wonderful children did. We were just a catalyst. That's all we were. It was the kids that are in your city school system that came and brought life to our building. The camp that we had was an IT camp. Uh, Trent and Mickey are fabulous teachers. My faculty had no idea that I had kids in the building. <laughs> that was the quietest group of children I have ever seen. They kept coming and saying, are you sure they're still in the building? They haven't left? We never saw them. Now, they went to the programs. They interviewed students. They interviewed teachers. They saw how all the equipment worked in the different classrooms. So this was a new technology for them. But they were studious. I saw them every morning, and I saw them every afternoon. On the last day of their day with us, several kids came up, especially one little girl who was sitting at the table, got her little goodie bag, and was getting ready to leave. And she had tears in her eyes, and she said, I don't want to leave. Why do I have to leave? Can I come back on Monday? And on Thursday night at the parent night, a little boy who was not old enough to be in the IT Academy camp uh, said, I want to come next year, but I know I'm not old enough, so I'm going to wait two years, and I'll be back. <laughs> So it showed that we had done the right thing. We had sparked an interest, created something that they not had an opportunity for. Now, we're very excited because on July the 18th, we will have our second camp. Our second camp is an allied health camp, and we invite all of you to come because the children are going to learn about what phlebotomy is how to make an arm and draw blood. They're not drawing anybody's blood. It's called Kool-Aid, okay? It's Kool-Aid, and they don't get needles. But they're going to make fake arms. We have them learning about nutrition. They're going to do DNA samplings and watch it grow. They're going to learn how pills are made with learning how they're pill-packed and how that works in life. They're going to learn about the bones 
They're going to also learn about laparoscopic surgery. They're going to get to pick paper clips out of a fake body. <laughs> so they will find out there's all types of careers. And through your innovation and wanting to partner with us, we're going to be able to expose another group of children to a group of six different allied health fields. So we thank you for that. Really appreciate Judy and, and Carol, just a tremendous partnership and very excited about that expansion. And uh, glad you stopped by my office that day. That was a good thing. <laughs> it was a good thing. You have, uh, you have your personnel update under tab five and then your monthly revenue and expenditure report under tab six. That's where you take over, Mr. Anderson. Okay, we're, we are at the 91.7% of our year. Uh, last year at this time, we, we had $871,000 of net income. This year, we're at 1,239,000 net income, so we're, we're on target for that. Our revenue collection stream is at 91.2. We're slightly behind the 91.7. Part of that reason, of course, is because sales tax lag two months behind. They don't get shown on the report until later, uh, and we add, we make adjustments to those as they come in. Our expenditure uh, is at 88.8 percent .8 of the 91.7, so we're on target for that as well. Uh, so we're we're feeling okay about our um, budget as far as we've gone so far this year. We got one month left in it. Any questions on the budget report? Sounds good. Okay. On the next one, this is your year-end report of your attendance and enrollment numbers. Uh, we ended the year in our PTR kindergarten through third grade at 18.47 students per teacher. Regular, that's regular classroom teacher. Uh, and grades four through six at 19.6. So that was very good. We also ended the year with a 96% attendance rate, and that is very good. We're very pleased with that number. Last year at this time, we were after the last month, we were 95.1. So we were real glad to see that. Enrollment total for the year at the end of the year was 6,881, and our budget was based on 6,890. So I was short by nine students on that. But I felt that was a pretty good one since uh, it was the end of the year report. And typically, that drops a little bit. So, uh, overall, the uh, tennis report it, it was was really good as we ended up the year, and we're real real pleased with that. Mr. Phillips, has a I'm just wondering, what do you attribute the great um, attendance record to? At the end? was it just because people aren't sick so much at the end of the year? Or? I think everyone was so excited about this school year, they all didn't want to stay home. <laughs> <laughs> Right, me. <laughs> there was a lot of excitement at this school year towards uh -huh. the end. I just really think that has that has a factor, and as they okay. didn't, so but we didn't have the sicknesses. So you're you're right. Yeah, I believe it though. I believe the excitement. So, Mr. Anderson, we were we were only down about 52 students from last year at this this time. Is that my is that my recollection? Uh, yes. Yes. And that's that's about what we, we were we were close in estimating that, were we not? Yes, I think I estimated fifty. Right. Thank you. Your annual agenda is behind tab eight, and that is the end of our reports and information. Are there any questions from any of the board members? Question. Ms. Duggan. I have a couple of questions. Um, I had two questions. One, what is the status of our teachers having copies of their math teacher's manuals and their reading teacher's manuals since those are new adoptions? I know they're getting training this summer in those areas, but do they already have those manuals yes. in their hands? Yes, would you hands? like to come make a report on that, please, at the podium? ordered all of the math teacher resource kits prior to the end of the year and teachers had the opportunity to come by and pick them up at the office or we had them available so they could pick them up during the training and I would say probably 80% of those have been picked up already um, we were are ordering on July 1st the math uh, student materials and we hope to have those delivered into the school the week of July 18th that'll be the first week principals are back in their buildings 
Um, as far as the reading adoption is concerned, um, that is, I heard from Morgan Branch on Monday that it's sitting on the commissioner's desk waiting on a signature. And that's our last step. We've been through quite a few steps to make this happen, and we don't see any roadblocks for there, but we should hear pretty soon. So as soon as that happens, we'll place that order, and uh, it's, we're gonna, it's gonna be by the skin of our teeth getting them in from the beginning of the school year. Mm -hmm. But we knew that, we knew that it was a late adoption and we'll get them in just as soon as we can. Mm -hmm. We are scheduling uh, the training on the reading series during the first four days of in-service coming back. T the trainings are only a half a day, but we've staggered them so that the classes can be smaller. So we have about 13 different sessions during those first four days of school. I thank you for being diligent to make sure that the teachers had the math materials. Uh, it's just so important that teachers have those materials over the summer to study as they have time to do that. And I know with the reading, um, since it isn't the year for reading, that has been a, another issue. But um, I just want to say publicly, too, how much I appreciate particular individuals at the State Department that have worked with us to make this happen for our teachers I think, and for the students. I think it's very important. Uh, the other question I have, which you may be able to answer too, is with the Common Core um, state standards, what has the district decided about the rollout of that for this fall? Well, um, I'll start with reading. And with reading, um, we are actually um, purchasing a Common Core edition of the reading series. Mm -hmm. It's um, the latest one that's on print. And at the beginning of each unit, it outlines the Common Core standards. So for kindergarten, first and second grade, that's going to be a relatively easy transition into the Common Core. So our goal is that we will um, use those Common Core standards in our unit planning and look at um, how those standards are uh, deconstructed along the way. Math is um, a little trickier because the content doesn't align quite as easy. Um, for example, let me give you an example. Um, with um, <coughs> money, you, you, they don't even mention money in kindergarten or first grade. It's not mentioned until second grade. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to go forward with Common Core for sure with kindergarten and first grade in math. And I actually talked with um, a representative from um, the McGraw Hill that we pur are purchasing our math materials. And they are developing a crosswalk to help us make that transition. So we'll have those materials for teachers that once again they can use in their unique planning. With second grade, we're really going to look very carefully at the preparation between in second grade to prepare students for third grade Tennessee standards because as you know we will be still tested on the Tennessee standards up until the year 2014-15. So we want to be pretty careful about that and we want to make sure that we send our third graders, our second graders into third grade well prepared for the next school year. So I anticipate we'll move that direction but we'll also reference those Tennessee standards pretty strong in second grade in math. Uh, because what parents need to understand is that our incoming kindergarten children, they will be the first children to be tested on these new Common Core State Standards with a new test. Yes, and um, it'll be a national assessment. Yes. Um, and probably have benchmark assessments along the way. So uh, we really want to make sure that we're preparing our students to be ready for that assessment. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Renier? Uh, Dr. Gilbert, can you tell us what the status is of the board uh, computers and are we going to be able to get them up and running, say, by the first, uh, by our work session in September? Since that's the basic start, fairly much of the start of the school year, it sure be nice to have them online and be ready to go if possible. Yes, of course, we have the, the laptop computers for you. We also, uh, Ms. Ridley uh, headed up team to investigate the different programs available. After looking at those programs, it was decided that we could actually do it um, easier ourselves. And so they have put together a program to be able to send the information electronically to you through email and have it available for your board agenda packets for next month if we want to go and, and start pushing it for next month. We're, we're ready to move forward with it. Thank you. Campbell. If that, that occurs, then this building is equipped for us to use those laptops here? 
Am I right? Yes. Our technology department from City Schools came over and checked it out, uh, but you will have it emailed to you, so you'll have it downloaded in your computer from home when you get it, you know, like on Wednesday or so. You'll be able to do that. But, yes, it is, uh, is ready for us. If you need to go look at something, it's here. And actually, Ms. Hall is here tonight experimenting to make sure of that. Any other questions or comments from the board? Let me continue to invite all to come out to our policy study sessions. It's a good study session. You get to hear a lot of wholesome conversation and changes we'd like to see made. So please come out and be with us on the second Tuesday night of the month. If there is no other business, and certainly we're glad to see you back, Ms. Baker. But certainly we thank Mr. Tucker for filling in. But thank you. We're glad to see you. Is there a motion to? I move we adjourn. Second. Second.